Hey, this is Adam from Edge. I'm here with Rand Morimoto and Jeff Guillet. And you guys have written a book all about Hyper-V, right? We have. Yes. Yeah. So tell me a little bit, um, you know, start with you, Rand. Who, who are you? What's kind of your background? How did you get to the point where you're, you're releasing books on Hyper-V? Uh, so I've been working with the Microsoft Technologies now for, I mean, Land Manager was one of the first implementations that we did. So for many years in the product line. Um, got involved with the Microsoft products from uh, you know, Windows NT all the way through the current. Wrote a book, Windows 2008 Unleashed, which is the number one selling book in the world on Windows 2008. And when Hyper-V um, came out and, and it got announced as a separate uh, product uh, for installation within Server 2008, came out with a book and we also included Virtual Machine Manager 2008 with it. Great. So, full-on book covering uh, specifically Hyper-V. Okay. Jeff? Uh, my name is Jeff Guillet. I'm a senior consultant with Convergent Computing. And uh, we've been working with Hyper-V since pre-beta. It has been awesome from the beginning. The, the level of build quality is just amazing. All right. Now, I know Convergent did your own migration to, to virtualization and using Hyper-V. Can you tell us a little bit about your environment and, and how many machines and what the, what the consolidation story ended up looking like with Hyper-V? Absolutely. So our environment, uh, like typical for many organizations, so we got 65 people on staff. We have everything from Exchange and SharePoint and remote access. At one point, 40, 45 servers, physical servers. Um, over the years, we've done some consolidation, and initially we went to VMware, and we had a lot of uh, ESX servers that were replaced in consolidation. As Jeff mentioned, as we uh, have gone in and participated in the Hyper-V early adopter, we started moving our servers, both physical as well as our VMware systems, into Hyper-V servers. So today our environment looks like we have eight um, Hyper-V servers with various roles. Um, some servers in the edge that are uh, participating in DMZ uh, secured access, and, some, and, and most of them are internal application servers. Okay. So a, a real gains there in terms of, of space back and power consumption? Oh, absolutely. You know, when we went from 40-some-odd you know, servers and we had five racks going with these servers, now I mean, we have these racks that we're looking to rip them out and find something to do with the, the space that we're, we're going to leave open. So yeah, absolutely. Huge um, consolidation. Of, in the number of racks that we need, um, the number of systems that we need to effectively back up, because part of the whole process also, virtualization made us think about consolidation. So did we really need three or four of these systems where we were able to put it on a single Hyper-V, dedicate two or four processors to it, and, and get performance out of it? So we've been very happy with that consolidation model internally. Cool. Now you spent a, a good section of the book here talking about planning and deployment and getting ready for the deployment. What would you say are some of the main gotchas or, or headaches or, or pitfalls for people to watch out for when they're getting ready to, to do some kind of a, a virtual consolidation? Well, uh, planning is key. Uh, you really need to decide how you're going to spec out those uh, Hyper-V hosts and how many guests are going to go on each one. Look at your I.O. loads. Look at uh, what the bottlenecks are normally in those types of applications. and. Uh, move them into the, the correct type of uh, server. One of the things that we included inside the book is there's a whole ha uh, half chapter, a full chapter, on the um, virtualization accelerator, where we actually went through and, and there's a tool that Microsoft provides for free that basically allows you to go through and scan the environment, look at workloads that currently exist. And we've taken advantage of that and we talk about that uh, in the book to be able to say, here are the different workloads, this is the performance, and it actually makes some recommendations as to can you put five workloads or eight workloads on a single Hyper-V host, what is the utilization, how many processors do you need, what type of disk that you need, what disk I.O. So um, we talk about it in the book, and it's also a tool that we've been able to leverage uh, quite heavily that Microsoft provides okay. to help you with that. Load balancing. So tell me a little bit more about those workloads. What kind of workloads are, are really suited for, for virtualization? Uh, any web server? Uh, domain controllers, we're doing uh, quite a bit of exchange right now. Uh, there are quite a few application servers, legacy application servers, that we are prime candidates for virtualization. Get it out of the racks, put it on a, a Hyper-V server, and uh, it just makes sense. And then when you extend that to be able to say that here are your production servers, we're also doing DR now. So what we're finding is that DR, in many cases, becomes one of those areas where not only will I put a DNS server, DHCP server, a web front end on our Hyper-V, but also be able to set up a secondary set. So that way, for failover, if one um, server guest session fails, we fail over to another host server. And in many cases, we're now stretching this using Windows 2008. We're able to do stretch clustering. We're able to 